Hello, everybody. It's uh, been a month already since we last saw one another, and I'm so happy to be back again moderating another talk through mural arts. If you haven't been here before, this is our Art of Activism chat, and today I have two really badass women with me, Simone Holland, Shannon Downey, and uh, they're art activists, and that's kind of what we're going to start talking about today. Our theme for today is shine a light on hidden truths. So we're gonna start turning on everybody's cameras. Hello, Simone, and hello, Shannon. Hi, guys. Hey, hello. <laughs> so I'm so happy that we could, well, for me, it's like a, a rainy Thursday. So this is great to be chatting with uh, two friends today instead of napping. I don't know if that's true or not. No. <laughs> no, I'd rather be here chatting with you than taking a nap. But um, I love the fact that we're using this word today, art activist. Simone, I know that you are a creative director, um, you're a filmmaker, and Shannon, I love that you're a craftivist. And I'm taking that straight from your Instagram. Um, what do you say? Um, how does it stitching fury into action. I love that because we're going to delve into that later, which you're taking cross stitch somewhere. I didn't think it could go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but I'm going to stop, you know, uh, extolling your, your wonders and let you introduce yourself to everybody. We'll just, I'm just going to pick, I'm just going to go like class. I'm going to go Shannon and you go first. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah. So, Hey everyone, my name is Shannon on the internet. I'm known as badass cross stitch. Um, I'm an artist and activist, a craftivist, um, I really, I like to think of myself as like a community organizer disguised as an artist, right? So everything I'm doing is around um, building community, mobilizing community, and art is, and in particular embroidery, is sort of the hook that I use to trick people into hanging out with me and taking action um, and having uncomfortable conversations. I'm super fun. <laughs> But people wouldn't sign up for these classes if they didn't want to have these uncomfortable conversations with you. So, yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let everybody know before we let Simone uh, tell you a bit about what she does, we are using a new feature tonight. So if you're looking for a live transcript, if you check our chat box, there's a link that you can uh, click on that. So Simone, you're going to be recorded for all posterity. Go ahead. Tell us about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. One, my name is Simone. Um, I am an artist and filmmaker based here in Philly. Um, I guess I speak up for people who don't have the space to um, just telling stories that kind of come organically to me. Um, I have a few projects in the works right now. Hopefully, you know, I have a teaser for everyone to see today, which I've been sitting on for two years. So I'm really, really excited for that. Um, but just, you know, having conversations through film um, is something that I love to do. And, you know, the film itself is really important. Um, but the work that I do is to, I try to bring in different types of artists and make multimedia film based projects so that the conversations around the films um, are a little bit more inclusive. Um, and there's just an open door there. Yeah, I think, oh, you know what? Someone is saying that the chat's disabled. Okay, great. I just wanted to make sure that they everybody's able to enjoy this new feature that we're using. Um, we also, oh, that was so quick, Victoria, thank you. We also have Simone's teaser in the chat box as well. Uh, the only reason why we're not playing it today because normally we do play a little snippet is because it deals with such immense issues. We don't feel like we should be cutting that off at any point. We want everybody to be able to see that in its entirety. So please do check that out. Uh, but I think last week when we talked, which seems like so long ago, guys, uh, I'm like, was it last week? Was it two weeks ago? This sheltering in, man. Time is just like flittering away for me. <laughs> and we were just talking about, you know, you using art for your activism and sort of like not the other way around and what that really entails. Uh, and the one thing that I thought was interesting, Shannon, is that the first time I found out about your work, it seemed like, okay, she does cross stitch. I had no idea that you're actually traveling, meeting people, creating what, what people, I guess, sort of feel like are older sort of um, conventions when it thinks about cross stitch. Now today it's like Etsy, you're on Instagram, everything is fun and modern and fresh. And when I think about what you're doing now, I kind of think about 
our grandparents doing it, our grandmothers, you know, our aunts and uncles. So, I mean, and I'm saying uncles because I know I have men in my life who love to stitch as well. I don't want to, you know, not include anybody in this amazing craft, but you're sitting around in a circle talking to people, like you said, having these, these really tense conversations or uncomfortable conversations. Right. You're bringing something old into a very new forum for a lot of people. Can you just kind of tell us how you achieve mm -hmm. that or how it works so people can understand what I know now? Yeah, for sure. So um, what I found was that as I was stitching and sharing um, and folks sort of assigned me this word craftivist, um, I, I saw like folks were interested in also doing the thing, right? They weren't just interested in what I was talking about or what I was making. They wanted this skill set. And so I'm like, well, I can teach anybody to stitch in half an hour. I got this, you know? And, you know, the other thing is that um, it's a very inexpensive medium, right? A couple bucks and you have everything you need. Um, and so I was able to start bringing people together in small groups to teach them how to embroider. Um, and then naturally the conversation because of um, how folks know me um, was, you know, around different issues of, um, you know, things you don't really talk about with strangers, right? So we were talking about white supremacy. We were talking about patriarchy and capitalism and, um, everything really. And, and I started to see that um, embroidery in particular was such a perfect medium um, for facilitating these conversations. Like I didn't actually have to facilitate anything, even though I was totally ready. Like at all times, I'm like, well, if somebody says this, I'll have to say this. <laughs> I never had to do that once because the, the medium facilitated things, right? So when you're sitting in a circle and you're working on something, the body language situation that normally happens if you're having an intense conversation is gone because mm. you're not looking at each other. You're not, um, you're, you're looking down, you're focused on something. Um, and then you're working on something. So it, it's also a slow medium. So you're working on it. The energy in the room has slowed down as a result of what you're doing. Um, so the conversation slows down, which is just a better, better space to be in when having difficult conversations with strangers. Um, and what happens is you can sort of come in and out of a conversation as you feel comfortable because you are also working on something, right? So nobody expects you to be engaged the whole time. So if you feel you're triggered or you're, you're confused by something or you want to think through something, you can sort of step back into your piece and then come back when you when and if you feel ready. And so it really has created a perfect space um, for these these things to happen. And then, you know, folks connect to each other. They connect to what we're talking about um, and they're excited to learn how to do more. And so this is just the first step in like getting folks together and creating this safe space in this community so that we can move them past that into action. Yeah, I think it's it's a great skill set. Um, it just lends to so many different emotions coming out because I think we had discussed that historically this is kind of known as woman's work. Mm -hmm. um, but when you think about it, through this use, they were able to put lots of sort of coded messages into this stitch. And they, even now, when I think about the stitches that I buy from my house, they're always messages of empowerment or you know, sort of people taking something back for themselves and then wanting to display it in their home so that other people could see that voice on the wall or even if it's just for yourself. So I could see that facilitation, you know, uh, around the circle and having that conversation and using that stitch as a means to really sort of like open up that inner self, um, which I think is really interesting. I'm, I'm going to keep delving into it. I just want to, I'm like <laughs> bouncing around with so many thoughts, but um, I want to sort of let Simone glide into what she's doing and how that sort of works around what we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I'm gearing up for the uh, documentary docu-series that's linked in the chat. Um, so please feel free to watch. Uh, there are seven women total. Uh, it is a film that is based around challenging standards of beauty through conventionally beautiful images. Uh, so we have seven women, all local to Philadelphia, all considered models, um, whether or not they feel that they are, uh, all artists in their own right, um, you know, from hand embroidery to painting to, um, I don't know, they just, they do everything. They're amazing. Um, talking, sitting and talking to these women, um, I decided to give each one of them an era from pinup to futurism or cosplay. And 
Uh, we have six different photographers come in and take still photos of each one. And then um, the next phase of the project, which you know will be a little bit of a surprise, involves street art uh, and seven different local street artists who are all amazing in their own right. Um, who, you know, for me as a filmmaker, you know, I was always kind of questioned, why would I bring in photographers? Why would I bring in street artists? It's film, I should just make the film and put the film out. Um, but the conversations that I had around the actual film and the topic itself uh, were kind of what made it more powerful and really caused a snowball effect. Uh, you know, as a woman myself, you know, I go, I've gone through a lot. We all have gone through a lot and mm -hmm. talk to each woman involved, person involved, you know, there are a few men involved as well. Um, just the stories that, that came out of it, I always just felt like I wasn't <laughs> covering enough. You know, I started out with three women and then it four, five, six, seven, you know, it, it grew. Um, but the, the conversations around, you know, just the, even when we were on set, uh, you know, we had a whole diverse set, all people local to Philly, um, and they sat through each of these interviews and they're the only ones who were kind of there in the room um, while each of these women, you know, bared their souls to us, um, telling us things that, you know, they never told anyone. Uh, so once we hit that, those moments in the interviews, um, we all went out after we filmed and, you know, we ended up talking until 5.30 in the morning, just about life, about everything, things that would, were normally not talked about or things that were considered taboo, questions were asked that were, you know, would have been considered rude if you randomly asked someone, you know, there were just ways in which um, film just opened up a world of conversation that I hadn't really experienced on any other set. Um, so I just ran with it. And, you know, having those individual conversations has just been so rewarding. And, you know, with quarantine happening, I just think it's really, really important to focus on mental health and, um, just really open up those conversations and let people know that, you know, you're not alone. Yeah, so, you know, I love the fact that now we're starting to get into the common threads of the work that you and Shannon do. And the first thing I guess is to throw it out to either one of you is, is how you choose these very sensitive topics. Like before Shannon, you get to the circle, I know that you announce what topic it's gonna be so that no one's sort of like ambushed by like, today we're talking about, um, but, what is it, what's important to you at the time? Is it something that's happening in the media to other people? How do you choose what you want to talk about in film, Simone? And then Shannon, how do you decide what you're going to do like that day for, for the stitch circle? Oh, whoever okay. wants to do it. <laughs> yeah, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so sometimes I announce it, right? Like it's an intentional um, gathering around a, a specific topic. And sometimes it's just sort of understood that when you come here, we're going to be having those conversations. And it, it is completely um, dependent upon who's in the room and what, what they bring up. And it really comes from what they're stitching. So like what they choose to stitch that day drives the conversation. Um, and then in terms of my work, everything I do is like hyper reactive to what is happening in the world. Um, and using those moments to really push conversation and to um, push folks to think differently about um, whatever the topic is, but also then like ways to take action around this thing, right? So you sort of get them while it's hot and move them into the action category. That's crazy. Cause just like, you know, Simone's tackling these mental health issues here you are on the spot with them, you know, it's sort of like, I can see Simone knows what she's addressing, right? Mm -hmm. She knows what, you know, she's, she's sort of anticipating how her audience is going to react to that, but you're kind of like on the spot with it. How are you handling that situation? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> people are pretty cool. like, people are pretty cool. You know, um, I think it leads to, I, I feel like I personally have to be really informed. Um, and I have to be really willing to admit when like something is outside of my wheelhouse, right? Um, and a lot, a lot of times I'll ask for resources or um, drive people to different resources because I'm certainly not an expert in everything, um, but I do know where to find the experts, right? And so mm -hmm. I'm surrounded by them. And so I can drive people to those spaces. But um, I think it's just a lot of honesty and a lot of you know, I, I was doing um, a workshop last night uh, and we were talking about the ERA 
And I'm like, you guys, I know a lot about the ERA. Also, I don't understand anything about how it's moving through our political system and why it's taken 40, 50 years and what this new thing that just happened means and where it goes next. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I, I don't think anybody can keep up with it who isn't working on it every single day. But here are the people that you need to go talk to and the resources that they have. And so, I mean, that's my approach is just radical honesty <laughs> at all times. <laughs> Have you noticed like a shift from, cause you're traveling from state to state right now, aren't you? Yeah. So where are you at right now? If you don't mind saying. I'm in Austin, Texas right now. So does it, I guess it's like, it's just so interesting. Is it changing by what state you go to? Or are you, are you sort of choosing topics that way? Like this is what's happening here in Atlanta. Maybe this is what's happening here in Texas. Um, a little bit. The trick is, is that because right now we're not coming together so much in person, I've been able to do like a few um, but we're all uncomfortable. So, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, we're, we're actually just talking about our discomfort by being around each other at that point. Um, so the things that we're doing happen are happening online. So even though I'm in Austin, I'm talking to people all over the world. So, oh, that's right. you know, it doesn't, it doesn't so much align that way right now, but I could see it definitely like coming that way because I'm certainly using my experience here, um, to, to sort of like share out with others a little bit like a roving art reporter, you know, just around like, hey, the the unhoused situation here is bad. And like, here are the actions that I'm seeing the city take. Here's how an outside, like an outside perspective on what I'm seeing. Um, and then, you know, trying to um, bring aid to those issues here, hyper locally. So like, you know, can I, can I get, a community from around the world to donate to a mutual aid organization in Austin, Texas, because that's where I am. And that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. And still yet, this has to remain a fun thing to do. Totally. Um, yeah, you know, it's, like, yeah. it's like, oh yeah, well, we still came here. To we have fun. so much fun. We really do. We have so much. Fun. I mean, I love this. And, and I think people get how much I love this and that like I think that's the best part is that when you make it fun it's not scary it's not overwhelming people don't avoid it so we're getting together and yeah we're having hard conversations or conversations around hard topics um but we're also laughing all the time and learning something new right so there's everybody's on an equal playing field no there's no hierarchy in that room or in this <laughs> zoom room um and so it it really, um, it lends itself to having a ton of fun and still, um, you know, addressing the topics, which I think is what we need more of. Like we need ways to be able to um, not be terrified of having conversations with strangers. Yeah, yeah. And I, so it's not that I don't want everybody listening to what we're saying today, but please, if you have some time, jump on IG. Even if you can like multitask right now, um, Shannon is badass cross stitch. So you can sort of like get a flavor for what she's talking about. And Simone, I just love to talk about the themes that you're working with in film, um, how you chose them, how you find the subjects that you interview as well, because it is, these are some emotional vignettes. I think we've discussed it before, but they, I cannot stop crying when I watch half of them, but I'll let you talk about it. Oh, yeah. Um... It actually started with uh, two of the models. Um, we were working together and um, at a separate job, like serving two or three years ago. Um, and we would just have conversations about art and where we wanted to be. You know, I had was working in makeup and wardrobe originally. Um, so I had a, a network of, you know, makeup artists and models and photographers that I kind of already knew. Um, but, you know, when we had these conversations, you know, I was trying to switch the camera and I really just wanted to be a director and I didn't really know exactly how to make the switch. Um, I kind of knew what I wanted to talk about, uh, but we would just sit and talk about art and life. And um, I actually think it started with Dina Baez, um, who's in the trailer. Um, she, you know, is a painter, uh, an amazing painter. Uh, she models as well, but she has locks. And uh, within that space, she was looking to get signed. Uh, but, you know, within the modeling world, in the beauty world, uh, you know, if you are outside of the mainstream, you know, you have to fit into a certain glass box in order to get jobs. Um, and you can't just work, you know, in 
um, be considered for jobs. And, you know, even if she shows up, it's not like there's going to be someone there who knows how to do her makeup or her hair correctly so that she can represent herself in the way that she wants to be seen as a model. Um, and, you know, we kept talking about the still shoot with this mirror and doing the old Hollywood thing. And I kept coming back to her and I said, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to do it. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I talked to one other uh, artist who is seen as a model, but she doesn't see herself as a model. She sees herself as an artist. Um, she models for her friends and, you know, to, because she enjoys it. Um, but the, the conversation was always, you know, not being seen in the light that you want to be seen in. Um, not being taken seriously, uh, being pretty and being treated as such, but still not being seen as human um, mm -hmm. with flaws and, you know, things that you're good and bad at. Um, so it just, it really just snowballed. And, you know, as I kind of look through my past in a sense and look through Instagram and my contacts to see who was, you know, speaking up um, and just kind of being honest in the social media space, that's kind of how I picked, you know, people like Heidi or um, um, Monday, who I actually grew up with. She's actually not a model. She's like gorgeous and skinny, but she's a very academic focus. And she's actually, uh, she actually works at NYU, I think. I don't want to misquote it. Um, but it's just, you know, all of these conversations are just gut-wrenching um, when it comes to just trying to speak up for yourself and represent yourself. And, you know, with the topics, we ended up talking about, you know, colorism, um, hair, uh, LGBT struggles uh, with family, cultural struggles in the Black community, the Asian community, the Latinx community, um, sobriety, self-harm, depression. You know, we, we talked about um, everything, RPG games and escapism. Um, mm -hmm. They just were, were really, really honest and ready to have the conversation. I think it really just takes that one push, you know, the same thing with Shannon. It really just takes that one moment um, for people to just open up. Um, so for me, once it started, I just didn't turn it off. <laughs> you know, I just went with it and, and now we're, we're here. Yeah. There's all this like community building around art that I find, um, I don't know, I guess maybe heartwarming <laughs> that this is like a vehicle that we can, I keep, you know, because it's one of those things where you, you keep saying, and it sometimes it sounds really hokey that like your art has the power to change lives, or maybe it sounds hokey to other people. But when you see that working in action, there's no way that you, you don't wake up thinking that I, I want to, I don't, I want to create this, right. I want to make this avenue, uh, or create this venue for people to be able to just like let things go. Um, and I think that's what we all are trying to do right now, especially in this time with the pandemic. I think we all have a lot of time to sort of like uh, internalize and focus on ourselves uh, and maybe just start a bunch of healing. And I think that the projects that you're doing are motivating that process. Uh, the one thing about the, that I find is sort of ironic about it is that, you know, I mentioned before, Shannon, like you're sort of broad daylight you're with people. I know you're now sort of like online with people. Um, but I'm looking, you're looking at everyone's faces, even though we're looking down to do the stitch, there's this energy, right, where you get to see people's faces and how they are sort of emoting when you're talking about things. But with Simone, you've got these quiet moments where the lights are down when these uh, films are on. And that's kind of what I love about, you know, being in a movie theater, I get to cry by myself, I get to laugh <laughs> by myself, <laughs> you know, like I, I feel strength in being able to do that. But at the same time, when the lights come on, I can look around and see how other people have responded to the same thing. Um, but with sort of maybe being cut off from people in that way, Simone, like how are you being able to have conversations with your community? Um, honestly, originally when I planned the film and finished the film and wanted to, I wanted to have a, an engaging personal event um, and make it kind of like a party screening um, to kind of lighten the mood with the topics that were talked about to open up the conversation. Um, but I wanted to do that last March, which was, you know, when quarantine first started and everything had to be shut down. And it made, I really had to go back to the drawing board without anyone to really talk to, you know, besides my partner, Matthew, about, you know, where, where I wanted to go with this project. Um, did I want to finish it? Did I want to wait until quarantine was over? Um, and then I had the idea of, of having 
um, each one of the women send in a COVID update video, um, which was very powerful. It's not in the teasers. Um, it's just very heavy. Uh, but, you know, I, I just, it just grounded the entire project. And those are, you know, I had to kind of have those conversations with each one of them, you know, make sure that they weren't in, uncomfortable because, you know, the ethics of filmmaking is making sure that the subjects aren't just saying what you want them to say, um, that they're always comfortable and that they're okay with everything that you're, you're putting out into the world. Um, so that was really hard because I was also going through my own problems and issues and I had to make sure I was there for each one of these women who were, you know, still willing to tell their story in that way. Um, you know, a lot of the women involved, the photographers involved, the street artists involved, um, have a pretty big following. Um, as, far, as far as, you know, I'm also working with Conrad from Streets Department and Mural Arts. Um, so there's a very big uh, social following, I guess I would say, you know, social media is not my favorite, but, you know, if it is a, a platform that you can use to kind of bring people together, especially now when people aren't going outside or, you know, going to a bar and hanging out and talking to their friends and, you know, they're really just secluded. Um, I've been leaning into that space um, to try to reach as many people as possible to say, you know, we're all in this together, you know, don't be afraid to talk to people. Um, it's kind of a roll of the dice of how people will react. Um, but I'm also, you know, with the screenings, I'm also going to be having, you know, live DJ set beforehand to kind of lighten the mood. And then with the screening, you know, we say watch the film. And then afterwards, there's going to be a women's mental health focused panel. Mm -hmm. um, with you know a professional, myself, one of the women or two of the women from each of the episodes, um, and most likely one of the street artists, so that you're really getting the full scope of what the film was and how it affected everyone behind the scenes that was actually involved in the process um, to open up the conversation to show that there can be different perspectives. It's not just my perspective on these women's lives, you know, the street artist's perspective matter. There are certain things that I miss that will come to light because of the art that everyone else is doing that is important and I think needs to be seen. Um, so, you know, it's a completely different way of maneuvering and talking to people that I was not prepared for or used to. Um, but it's just been so rewarding to really almost create a community of artists and kind of bridge the gap between street art and photography and film um, in that way and kind of just keep it moving and let everyone know that, you know, we're here for each other, um, even though the arts have really been struggling with everything going on. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's wonderful that, you know, we've been able to um, use art or you guys have been able to use art to um, really go out to so many different communities and, and go to different spaces. I think we had mentioned like you guys are in such opposite realms of the art world, but we're still talking about these common threads. Um, but Shannon, when I when I think about your work, the first thing that I noticed when I went to your Instagram is that you have these lovely titles, right? It's <laughs> it's artist, it's activist, it's creativist, uh, it's queer AF. I started to speak to you about like we started talking about the history of Stitch, mm -hmm. and I thought it was really maybe important to touch on the fact that you felt the need to mention Queer AF on that <laughs> page, right? So, because for yeah. me, it's like, oh, you want to talk about it. Let's talk about um, stitching in these spaces that are treated in such a sort of masculine and feminine realm. Like you either have to be this or this to do stitch. Why do you, why did you feel the need to say that? Like, how does that intertwine into what you want people to know about this, this craft or the skill set? I like to say. Yeah. You know, I, I'm really trying to mess with the whole paradigm around this medium, um, you know, without um, without taking away the honor that I think should exist for the beautiful history of it, particularly by women, right? Um, but because it was and has been a medium um, largely contributed to by women, it gets the title craft, which in the capitalist hierarchy of art and craft is lower than art, right? And and so there's like all of these um, interesting like patriarchal and um, capitalist sort of associations. And then, you know, this the work isn't really considered um, fine art or, you know, so we go through all these categories, right? And anytime it's attached to women, it just sort of goes lower and lower on the list. Um, 
and I want to elevate it. Um, I use the word craft and art interchangeably because I don't see them as different, right? So that really throws people off. Um, and the reason why I, it's interesting because I've been out forever, right? Like queer is not like a super interesting part of me to me, right? Like, I'm just like, whatever, that's like a thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but as I was in these spaces, when I would say something that would clearly indicate that I'm a queer person, I would watch people have a reaction to that. Um, particularly white women, straight white women in these spaces. And I was like, well, this is interesting. Um, and so I started to realize that I needed to be intentional about um, being sort of loud about that again, which I thought I was sort of past it. <laughs> like, I didn't need to do that anymore. You know, I just live an out life, right? And so yeah. that felt like enough. Um, but people love to assume that everybody's straight. Right, like it's this really interesting assumption. Mm -hmm. I assume everyone's gay until proven straight. So <laughs> like, that is just how I roll. But I, I was, I found myself like offended that folks were con like assuming I was straight, mm -hmm. and then having a reaction to me being, you know, them finding out that I'm queer, and I'm like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> like, right, right. This. And so now you know, I bring that to the space very vocally um, as a reminder that like, this is, this is a different space than maybe what you're used to. Mm -hmm. um, I also have found like a lot of white supremacist culture in craft. Um, and in really? Oh, yes. <laughs> like, oh, yes. In, in particular quilting. Okay. Um, and so it's been interesting um, seeing that play out and seeing uh, like finding conspirators and allies within those in the different craft communities to really say like no 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 this is a, a subset of culture therefore of course there are all of these issues within here and we are we are creating a new space and okay. that's what this new space is going to look like and that it's is. gender free <laughs> Yeah, you know that <laughs> um, I love like giving out books for people to read. So we, I'm going to say, and I'm, I'm going to preface it with, with Shannon, I'm sure we'll be nodding her head, is that <laughs> I'm going to say, if you'd like to delve more into what we're talking about and the history of um, stitching, there's a book called The Subversive Stitch. Now, please don't come back yelling at me, telling me that you hated this read. Um, it is heavy, is what we were saying. It's not that it's a bad yes. read. Um, yes. It is. I think the subtitle of it is like embroidery and the making of the feminine. Um, I think the woman's name is like Rosika Parker. I could be wrong, but you, everybody can just Amazon it. Uh, oh God, no, let me say that. Mom and pop it if you can. Mom and pop it if you can. <laughs> but it does give you some uh, background into stitching and, and the masculine and the feminine uh, when it comes to this, this uh, craft. I love craft too. I don't think that that's a derogatory term for it. I try to say skill set because I want people to understand that it's not easy. It's right. not something you sit down and it's not to say that anybody can't just sit down and start stitching. It's yeah. incredibly therapeutic. Mm -hmm. But when we start to look at things and institutions, or we start to look at cultural means that people have, you know, expressed themselves through this, it starts to get incredible. You mm -hmm. have a lot of respect for uh, this, <laughs> this yeah. craft is like this, this is a skill set, uh, yeah. most definitely. But yeah, it's a, some wonderful history behind it. But I'm really shocked to find out that no, I'm not. I take it back. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, are you now? <laughs> I'm not shocked that people are shocked that you're queer and stitching because don't we? We just sort of automatically think of like this this sort of dainty little lady sitting down stitching pillows with you know yeah. orals from her grandma. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank God, stitching it just isn't like that anymore. Uh, but Simone, like what, what have you encountered uh, in filmmaking that might be like based around stories like this? And I'm saying that thinking to myself like that doesn't sound, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> How is your community for you? What, what are some popular misconceptions that people have about a woman, uh, a black woman who's a filmmaker, and then you're touching topics that they don't want to hear us speak about? Yeah, it's... Um... <laughs> It's been great. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm just, I think, you know, as, as far as being, you know, not only a um, Black 
woman director, you know, I am a cinematographer as well, a camera operator. There's not many of us um, that have access to the tools that we need to um, put out the quality of work that we are definitely capable of. Um, so that is a huge issue. Um, I've been lucky enough to have some amazing anchors in my life. Uh, you know, D the DP of Vex, Hillary Hannock, you know, gave me my first camera job. I kept founding her. Um, you know, she got me a job at a um, rental house, which, you know, is complete hands-on gear. I was able to really tinker with things, take things apart, put it back together, you know, which prepared me for a set, um, you know, because if you show up on set, you know, you start out as a um, assistant cam camera person mm -hmm. um, and there's the second and then the first and then the camera operator. So when you start out as an assistant camera person, your whole entire job is to know exactly how to work the camera and how to fix it um, if something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have hands on, you know, these bigger cameras, you're not going to know how to do that. You're not going to do your job well. You're not going to understand what the director of photography or the camera operator are saying, and then you don't get the job the next time. Um, so it's really, it's been an uphill battle, um, but you know, like I said, I've had some really great anchors and support along the way of people who really believed in my work, you know, with Vex, um, Chris Mendoza at uh, Maestro Filmworks, you know, gave me the space for the weekend, you know, Video Smith gave me all of the gear that I needed to film this. Um, you know, I've just been really, really working hard to make these stories count. And, you know, it's been really, really tough, especially trying to talk about the topics that, you know, like you said, people don't want to hear us talk about. Um, you know, so like I said, I'm not sure what the actual reaction will be. I know there will be a lot of people who will resonate with it at home um, because there are things that we all go through as women. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm also growing as a person and, you know, I filmed this two years ago and, you know, there are, there's uh, some diversity with, you know, who's involved, but, you know, I don't have anyone who's trans or, you know, anyone who's on that, the, in the LGBT community that is just woman identifying. Um, and that was something that, you know, I just had to learn as a filmmaker to, to like, I can only cover what I can cover. And then the next project around, you know, I can continue to grow and grow and grow and cover these projects. Um, but it is really an uphill battle, um, just trying to get my foot in the door and, and just show that these stories are worth telling. Yeah. I just want to let everyone know, I was just like getting so distracted with our conversation. It's so, so great that I should be mentioning that we're going to start having a Q&A soon. So if you have any questions for Simone and for Shannon, please do put them um, in the q and I was about to say the chat box, please don't do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's so difficult for us to keep scrolling through that as well, but you please put them in the Q&A so that we can just open up the discussion to everyone watching here. Um, I noticed, I always check sometimes to see who's in on our chat. I love it when we have different artists from around um, Philadelphia. I'm going to say Philly because that's what Mural Arts is, my heart. Uh, we have Aubrey Costello, who's going to be so mad that I'm calling her out. Um, but she's another Fiverr artist who does some amazing work here in the city and touches on some amazing themes. Um, and what I love about her work as well is that she really, really tries to put a lot of sensitivity into her work, which is what I feel from you, um, the both of you. So I'm wondering, like, before we forget to mention it, well, how do we make it count, right? It's like, mm -hmm. you are learning as you go along in your craft. Um, I can hear that you guys have really opened up to your audience, but are there any decisions that you've decided to make to sort of push that forward? I know that's a huge, broad, expensive <laughs> question, uh, but if we were going to say like, it gives so anybody sort of like a roadmap to using art for activism. Mm -hmm. What would it be? Um, I would say just don't be afraid of the answer. You know, there's a lot of, you know, just openness and vulnerability in, you know, what I do, I can't speak for Shannon, but um, in filmmaking where I'm just open to a lot of criticism uh, for anything that I put out as an artist, anything that you put out is just open to criticism. And I think in the age of social media, there's just so much nuance in how to navigate that space and, and make sure that you're making it count. Um, and that, you know, you're not just putting things out just to put them out. Um, and, you know, I just haven't been afraid of the answers. And I think I've been really 
learning that with the street artists and their stories and what they're telling me and how they're identifying, and, you know, the ways in which I see I can grow as an artist, but also realizing that, you know, the story still needs to come out. It's mm-hmm. still important. Um, you know, we can speak on within the panel, we can speak on the things that we didn't speak out about in the film. And I think just opening that conversation, being willing to take the leap to, you know, as an artist, not just play it safe. You know, you're here to say something, so just say it. Yeah. Because you guys are being so vulnerable, you know, in, in everything that you're doing here, you're opening yourself up to sharing your own stories, which you know, like Shannon's laughing, but I'm serious. Like, you know, no. yeah, like, that's, that's real. real. That's real. So real. Like, <laughs> all the time, like, if you have a different, um, you, you know, you, these different communities that you guys are opening yourself up to, you, you're telling the same story every time you're opening up that wound, right? You're picking at mm-hmm. it, picking at it, giving a little bit more of yourself. And that's incredibly difficult. They're strangers, you know, but I, I guess I do understand that that's, there's something sort of comforting about the fact that we can bring people in who we don't necessarily know and, and share some expertise, share some empathy, share some love with them. But does it, does it get tiring? Are there moments where you just think, oh, girl, yeah, you know, like I, like, I just can't do this anymore. Sandra, I'm tired all the time. Um, <laughs> But let, let me tell you a story. I, so I have a, a, a big art installation that's growing and growing. It's like over 200 pieces now. And every single piece is like an identity, a statement, a belief, a story, a truth about me. And, and it was in resp- I started creating it in response to an exhibit I saw that was all men, all massive pieces of work and all about themselves. Mm. And there wasn't anything else in that in that show. And I, I just thought about it and I was like, women don't make art about themselves a lot. Like we don't center ourselves in, you know, in in this way. And I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. And let's see how I can make this big and obnoxious. And so I did. And then I hung it for the opening. And I looked at it and I was like, I'm not coming. I'm not coming to the opening (laughs) because it was so much of myself on a wall. And then I imagined the hundreds of people that were showing up and I was like, I can't be here. Like they can see it, but I can't see them see it. Mm. (laughs) And everyone was like, you have to come. (laughs) I was just like, fine, I'm going to need a drink. And so, so I get there and the whole day I'm like stressed about it. And I'm ready for like somebody to ask me about one or another or whatever and I'm so worried and then I get there and it happens the first person was like Shannon I don't know this person right and they drag me over to one of my pieces and they point and I'm like oh dear god and they and they tell me a story about themselves mm-hmm. and I was like you didn't okay this is great right so I'm like all about this the entire night and every time I've shown this work nobody cares about me, right? Like no, nobody asks any questions. They, they connect and they want to share a piece of themselves with me because of how much I've shared with them. And so that's what keeps me going because I'm just like, I am making space for them to be able to like share stuff that they haven't shared before and be vulnerable in ways that they haven't been before, because I'm so willing to put it all out there and be really vulnerable with it. Um, and, and so when that, when moments like that happen and things like that happen, I realize like, all I'm doing is making space for people. Like, it's oh not God. about me. It's about making space for other people to be able to share their truths and their stories and, and feel seen and heard. Is that like how it works for you, Simone? Cause I'm wondering like, when you approach people and you tell them that you want them to participate um, in these vignettes that you're making, be like girl please I'm not you know <laughs> I'm not gonna put that out there for everybody to see especially when I'm wondering if they're asking you what truths you share with people you, you want me to tell mine but are you telling yours like how does that work yeah I think you know there's just so much vulnerability there you know for me you know just being honest um during that time I was going through a major major shift in my life and it was kind of the lowest point that I've had you know didn't, you know, really have any money to make the film. I was, you know, it's in filmmaking that happens, but, um, you know, I 
just was determined to make it happen, reaching out to each one of them, even in the conversations. You know, I'm a pretty private person. Um, mm -hmm. but I think that when I talk to people, um, I leave room for them to speak on their issues as well. Um, so I just, you know, let them know what I was going, what I had gone through and what I was going through and why this project is so important to me. Why I, you know, am not just taking their story and putting it on a pedestal and say, here, look at all these people who are struggling. No, yeah. I, I struggled to edit the videos myself mm -hmm. because I had in my own life struggled with almost with at least with each one of them, something in my life, you know, had brought out uh, different types of trauma that I had gone through, you know, mm -hmm. and as a survivor, I just decided to stand in my truth and be honest and open, you know, as I approach different types of artists and try to, to show them, you know, that's been a hard part, hard part, trying to show them why their perspective is important in a film space. They're not filmmakers. Why would they care? You know, mm -hmm. they, usually just feel like I'm exploiting their artwork for my film. Um, but there are just nuanced ways in which I'm trying to involve everyone's perspective to show that, you know, it's just really, really important to see all sides of the story. And, you know, being being vulnerable like that, you know, I, I yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't touch the footage for a very, very long time, you know, mm -hmm. because I had to work through a lot of things within my own life to make sure that I would, be able to listen to the stories and, and do them justice and not put myself in it um, mm -hmm. and be unbiased in that way. And just continuing, you know, like Shannon said, continuing to be open, just opens the, the door for other people and open space for other people to tell their truths as well. So it's kind of like, you know, once you open the faucet, you can't really close it. <laughs> yeah. We're I think gonna... it'd be really interesting to see what the talkbacks look like after the film and if you experience something similar where folks in the audience aren't necessarily asking for more of you because you've already given so much mm. and it will be interesting to see if um they're willing to offer up at, at that point or they feel compelled to offer up that'll be really i want to be there that's <laughs> fine i will definitely send <laughs> Yeah, that's really my goal. My goal is, you know, I don't, I do want to sit and talk about the film, but I really just want people to ask questions. Um, you know, we'll have a mental health professional on the panel, you know, mm -hmm. so, oh, great. so there'll be people who can ask for resources, you know, we'll have resources for people to, to, you know, for people that haven't felt like they needed help to receive help, to let them know that, you know, you don't have to be rich to go to therapy or, you know, mm -hmm. there, there's, you know, it just, there's a there's a mentality that everyone just has to do it themselves and and you know you can't have a bad day you need to push through and that's not true you know i i just really hope that you know like shannon said people feel open enough to to talk about their own experiences and to just ask questions yeah i love that you're going to have someone involved in mental health on the panel it's like what a shocker to sit there and you think that you're going to be entertained by something or you're coming there to see someone else you know speak their truth and then you sit there and you realize, oh my God, that's me. Mm -hmm. Or I know someone who went through that. I can only imagine the rush of emotions mm -hmm. that are just flooding out at that moment. And then it's the, you know, what do you do? You, you see the film, you walk out the door. Now what? Right. You know, mm -hmm. I'm sitting with you. I'm yeah. stitching. I've said it out loud. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what do those next few minutes look like for people? Yeah. It's going to be like a happy hour type of vibe. <laughs> <laughs> so even out the, the emotions and everyone's come as you are you know it's it's there these topics are really heavy yeah, um, yeah. But at least you know if, if, if people are there for that then you know I hope you're in a space with people who want to be understanding right and they want to be around other people who might have these similar emotions which kind of like weaves into uh, one of the questions we just got because I realize what time it is so guys start putting your questions um, into the q and A. I want to have time to discuss everything they, someone asked, um, because you speak so confidently and so open about topics that are very difficult, have you always been this way or is it something that you learn to do? Which I guess is, yeah, that's very interesting. Like, why do you feel so comfortable having these conversations? I did not always feel this way. Absolutely not. Um, this is a very learned, um, and I, I, a lot of unlearning and a lot of deprogramming and a lot of realizing that um, not talking about these things uh, is how oppression works. 
right? Mm -hmm. And so these systems are built to keep us quiet, to keep us disconnected, to keep us from engaging with one another and sharing truths. Because once you start to share truths, you start to see the threads and you start to see the system, right? And nobody wants you to see the system because that's how the system works. It just sort of quietly in the background does its thing. And so it was through that learning um, and through meeting people who I was in awe of, who were able to speak truth to power on levels that I couldn't even imagine. Um, and then, you know, educating myself um, be, I speak with confidence when I know what I'm talking about, right? Or when I feel like I can at least contribute something here or, um, you know, otherwise I'm there to listen, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's a lot of self-educating and then a lot of just like, this is my radical act. This is how I deconstruct systems is by speaking and encouraging people to speak and we will talk about money and we will talk about all of the things because that is how we overcome all of these systems. So that is, it was a very much a learned thing. And the more you do it, the easier it gets, right? Mm -hmm. like the more I do it, like, I don't even think about it anymore. I'm like, I'll say anything to anybody. What? <laughs> right? Like this is, I don't hold, I don't hold back in any way because I don't need to, because that, you know, that's, I refuse to participate in the systems in that way. That's so true. I, you know, a lot of times I think to myself, we're, we're so shamed by so many things into just holding that in and not letting that out. And then I think you're right. That's part of the crippling, isn't it? Because that makes you feel like it's just you. Yeah. There's no one else because we're not being right. strong enough to speak or brave enough to speak out about it. But mm -hmm. I suppose, isn't it hard to do when people keep telling us that you're not supposed to? Yes. Uh, you know, That's we need more and more people saying, nope, we're doing it, <laughs> you know, and, and it makes space for others. Right. So if I have to be the most, you know, um, the most willing to talk about all the things in order to give somebody space to dabble in it while they build mm -hmm. up their confidence and strength around it, I'm happy to serve that role. Have you found Simone that like uh, people are, are are people asking you to talk about certain things now? Because now that you're, they know that you're going to tackle them. I would imagine it's sort of like, oh, you know what? Could you maybe? Could we speak about? Yeah, I I think um, because I'm not approaching things as a traditional filmmaker and they're multi medium projects, they take a lot more time, a lot more energy, a lot more intentionality. And I don't think people always understand that. And I'm always appreciative when people reach out, you know, saying, this is my project. And I know that you have the ideas and, you know, you can kind of bring them to life, you know, as a director, that would be my job um, to bring, to build the treatment, to show the client what, what they can actually achieve, you know, with what they're trying to say. Um, but it's just, this project specifically has just been taking up all of my time, rightfully so. I'm not, you know, I'm so grateful to have the opportunity and for it to have grown to the capacity that it's grown. Um, but yeah, I have people who reach out, you know, with ideas that they have and they just don't know how to say it or they don't know how to reach the people they'd like to reach. Um, mm -hmm. But it's for me, you know, I also have to remember that I'm human. You know, I have my own boundaries. You know, I, I it's important to give, but it's also important to make sure that you're emotionally and mentally okay. Um, so I think that's been really just the point for me, you know, and, and piggybacking off of what Shannon was saying. Um, it's been, you know, as a private person, um, it's been, I kind of got to a ledge where I said, okay, what does success mean to me? What does life mean to me? What do I want to say? How do I want to exist as an artist? You know, I could just be a filmmaker and make narrative films and there's, you know, you can speak volumes to different types of topics within narrative film um but with a documentary space it's just so in your face um and open that that was the lane that i chose um you know i do work on narrative things here and there uh, but i just decided that that's i wanted to speak up and i wouldn't be afraid of what the answers might be if i asked the question hmm. yeah we 
goodness gracious we have two more questions i i'm just sitting here thinking to myself like this is i could go on for another hour on this uh <laughs> shannon someone asked uh where you get the idea or where did you get the idea for the stitching circles uh it was you know a little organic but also just you know there's a history of this right like yeah you know the guilds and folks coming together and and working together in this way um and so originally it was just folks who wanted to learn how to stitch and so i would bring people together and we would stitch and i started to notice that folks like would naturally start having interesting conversations um based on what they were stitching based on their understanding of how i use my art right so they would come with the idea that they were going to really stitch something that was powerful and, um, you know, made a statement. And then that I started to see the conversations um, happening. And that's, you know, I, I, I grew it in a way that was much more intentional as I started to see it as um, a space for it. So sort of all of the above. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's the wonderful thing about it is like that to me there's the the history behind it it's like we all like if you kind of like remember sitting around circles if you had grandparents if you had people in your family doing it so many great conversations come out of a stitching circle Ooh, all the tea gets spilled right it's like, all the tea. <laughs> and learn so much about all of the neighbors up above. <laughs> right? it's like, great. it used to be just gossip at least in my world and now i'm like let's Let's be a little more intentional with it. <laughs> I think they needed that resource. You need, they needed that outlet at the time. It's just like, you know what? Especially if you think about it, you know, something women being forced to do to prove that they were worthy for marriage or yeah. suitable mates. Like, what right. else did you have? But I see yeah. the, the, the now we have social media, so we we can use our together spaces more intentionally because yeah. we have that. <laughs> But um, Simone, they're asking, do you always plan for your work to have this mental health component or is it something you sort of like fell into? I feel like we've been talking about it all night, but I guess it's a very, very intentional, you know, question. Like, is this what you always intended for your work to be about? Um, I think this project specifically was originally based around specifically self-love and um, fashion, beauty, how you see yourself, which is an extension of mental health. I didn't really see it as a mental health product project until quarantine happened. And I just felt as though it needed to be pushed in that direction because that's where it was going. Um, as far as my other projects, um, I'm co-directing and DPing a uh, documentary called Born and Raised, which is about four DJs in uh, from West Philly. Uh, the teaser is out for that. I don't have a link for it, but you will be seeing more of that soon. Um, as far as other work, you know, I just want to make sure that, you know, if I'm doing a commercial or you know, a short film, whatever I do is just intentional in nature, you know, not just specifically mental health, obviously mental health is amazing and important. Um, but this is kind of happenstance uh, because of everything that's going on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this pandemic has really forced us to think about new avenues and new ways to sort of like push our art out into the world. But you guys are doing a great job of it. We're like almost towards the end. So what I want to do is know, like, so when you started to talk about a future project that you've got going on, um, Shannon, is there anything that we should know that you've got going on right now or any ways that we can like link up with you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have just started a series called How to Be a Good Human. Um, and it is less on the art side, more on the activism side, but in response to what I was hearing from folks that... Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of folks want to do stuff, but they they're not they don't have some of the tangible skills that they really want in order to feel confident enough in taking action. Um, so the first thing that we're offering, and they're all they're all free. The first are, are um, four bystander intervention trainings aimed at anti-Asian hate and identifying hate crimes and intervening when they're happening. Um, from there, how to prevent a drug overdose, how to um, unionize your workplace, how to start a mutual care um organization so there's going to be a whole bunch of them uh you'll learn so much more <laughs> as they get um developed but uh the first four you, you can sign up for now the first one's tomorrow actually uh, on my website so i hope folks will sign up and join in for some of those you don't stray away from the heavy do you i'm like <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> these are all things we should be talking about but I'm just like bravo for you for tackling I it, like I wanted but it should be fun right so I wanted it to be like like the Girl Scouts for grown-ups right where everybody's getting a merit badge after they complete one of the trainings so that like I'm a you know active bystander. I know how to stop a drug overdose. I can organize my workplace. <laughs> I think that's going to be really fun. I you know what? If are you real? I would put that patch on my jacket in the hat. Oh, I'm definitely doing patches. Patches are definitely a thing. <laughs> like that is really a great idea. I love that. <laughs> I, I want yeah. Please, please do let me know when those come out. I will. Um, the one thing that I noticed we didn't have in the chat was Simone's ID as well. Um, so it's Simone.new. I'm sure Victoria is already like typing away, getting that entered in, but I want to, people to have a, a way to connect to you to Simone. Um, but don't forget, Simone trailer is in this chat as well. Shannon's information is in this chat. And Victoria always sends out this uh, wonderful newsletter to everybody who attended uh, the panel. I just want to say thank you guys um, for, for coming here and talking to us about these things. And I wish we had more time because I feel like we could really start going into the, all kinds of mental health topics, but the work that you do is really important. I hope that you continue to do it um, and continue to keep up with us. I would love to know where you guys all are. Um, thank you everybody for joining this chat tonight and uh, tuning in all the time to Art of Activism, which is done by Mural Arts. And thank you Mural Arts for allowing me to host these amazing chats uh, every month, but please stay tuned for our next one next month. And much love to everybody out there as we're gonna we're gonna not be heavy we're gonna be light and like victoria like dance us out on some nice music <laughs> thanks Andrea.